strange place with unexplained and mysterious events occurring on a daily basis around the globe. Some cases I'm bringing y'all some with new, well, some shit that I'd be watching on already, but you know. But there are certain issues that have left us baffled for a long time, and they remain unsolved forever. Number five. Number five. On the 22nd of August, 1988, a woman whose name has only been given as Carol was driving to work along a relatively quiet two-lane highway near Putnam, Connecticut. She was running half an hour late as she rushed to the local hospital, where she was a social worker who counseled patients with mental illness and depression. As she drove, she came up behind a black truck that was driving very slowly. So she reduced her speed and settled behind it. She wondered why the truck was traveling at such a low speed. Go around and it. Suddenly, the truck started behaving strangely. It would speed up and then immediately slow down again, swerving erratically. Carol oh, immediately you. knew something was wrong, and in a moment, the truck came to an abrupt stop. Uh, if you don't call she the police, the call the fucking the police. The quickly got out of his vehicle and started walking towards her. And that's when she noticed he had a gun in his hand. He walked up to the window of the car, leveled the gun at her head, and pulled the trigger, hitting her from point blank range. Carol heard a rushing in her ears, and she thought she was going to die. But when she heard her car radio play, she knew it. He would have got his ass dropped as soon as I was seeing that gun. He would have dropped. I would have pulled my shit off. A blicko. But everybody, everybody, everybody don't have, you know. So no females, later, which I feel like the females need to have more, like, from his more shit to protect him. Saw Carol lying motionless in her car. Yeah. He immediately called for help, and when emergency personnel arrived, they found that she had already lost two pints of blood mm. and was barely alive. The bullet had hit Damn. her just under her left eye, severed an artery, and paralyzed her vocal cords. Troopers and detectives scoured brain and hollow, and its intersections for the assailant, but to no avail. Two drivers would inform police that they'd seen a black truck pulling off and onto the highway earlier while taunting other drivers on the road. Carol managed to recover from the attack, but the bullet is still lodged in the back of her head, and the scar on her face serves as a constant reminder of the morning when she was at the wrong place at the wrong time. They ain't never catch him? They never catch him? Oh, oh, Number four. Damn. They ain't never catch them? At around 6.30 a.m. The on the 1st of December, 1948, police were called to Somerton Park Beach, about seven miles from Adam Bay, Australia. Both men 
thought the book belonged to the other and left it in the glove compartment since. When they read about the unknown man, they retrieved it and found that the final page was missing, along with the phrase in question. Upon looking at the book more closely, a telephone number was found belonging to a woman who's named Justin. She told police that she'd given a copy of the book to Alfred Boxall, but he was still alive and still owned his copy of the book. The book was scrutinized under ultraviolet light, and it revealed a code that, to this day, has not been broken, and the Somerton man remains unidentified. Man. Number three. On the 30th of June, 1999, 41-year-old Ricky McCormick's body was found in a cornfield by a woman driving near Route 367 in West Hudson, Israel. Ricky was a high school dropout who lived with his mother at times, but had several addresses in St. Louis. He also suffered from chronic heart and lung issues, and had spent time in jail before. He was unmarried, but was a father of four. Police found the location of his body to be strange, as he didn't own a car, and that area wasn't on any public transportation route. They also found that he had no enemies and that he had not been reported missing. He was last seen alive five days earlier at the Forest Park Hospital in St. Louis, where he went for a checkup. When police checked his pockets, they found two notes that contained an unknown code which the FBI believed would help in finding his killer, as they may reveal his whereabouts shortly before he died. Attempts were made by the FBI as well as the American Cryptogram Association to decipher the code, but with no success. Upon I don't know what he calls nobody ain't crack. I know somebody can crack one of these codes. There's somebody smart as a motherfucker that crack these codes. I just don't want to crack these motherfuckers. That's all. decipher codes of any kind. His parents stated that he could only spell his name and certainly lacked the mental capacity to write in code. Oh, hell no. Police decided to ask him for help. And they were inundated oh, with no. calls and theories, prompting them to create a web page where the public could comment on the case. No solution to the code. You know they were trying to, hey, the they trying to get, they were trying to get justice though. I don't care. Can they do that? They trying to get some justice. Oh, well, 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 well. Number two. I ain't doing no pause. Y'all don't want to do no pause or so. Brianna Maitland from Montgomery, Vermont, wrote an exam to complete her GED and went to lunch with her mother, Kelly, afterwards to celebrate the occasion. Oh, so, oh, so. At lunch, her mother says she was in a good mood and they spoke about her plans to attend college. When they finished their lunch, they decided to do some shopping and while they were in the checkout line at a store, Brianna noticed something outside. She told her mother she would be right back and left the store. Kelly met her outside after paying and noticed that she seemed unnerved, shaken, and agitated. Her mother didn't want to pry, so she didn't ask what was wrong. She dropped Brianna off between 3.30 and 4 p.m. Yeah, I'm on with her. What is going on? With whom she I ain't gonna shake, though. Before leaving for her shift at the Black Lantern Inn, she left a note to Jillian, saying that she would see her at home after work. She then set off in her 1985 Oldsmobile. When her shift ended, Fellow staff members invited her to have dinner with her, nice but she declined, saying that she needed to rest before her shift at her second job in the morning. They would tell police that she left in her car alone. The following morning, about a mile from the Black Lantern Inn, Brianna's car was found backed into the side of an abandoned house, known as the Old Dutchburn House. The car had traveled partly through the wall, and police found two of her paychecks on the front seat. Next she gone, miss. The they found loose change. You some shit wrong, cuz. Ain't no way. And a water bottle. You just got your check. You think you think you think someone from D-Day checks in the car? And had it towed away. Crazy as hell, man. Brianna's mother didn't find you know, out about the abandoned car until five days later, as Jillian had been away for the weekend, and so only read her note on Monday. She phoned Kelly the following morning, who then started searching for her daughter. She phoned Brianna's friends and workplaces, but no one had seen her. When her parents reported her missing, police showed them a photo of the crashed car, and they recognized it as Brianna. 
At first, police assumed that she had simply left town of her own accord, but would later state that they suspected foul play. Oh, yeah, I gotta find out who she was talking to or something. Her friends or some, somebody. Her family offered a reward of $20,000 for information on her whereabouts. But despite suspicions that two drug dealers, Raymond Ryans and Nathaniel Jackson, were involved, she has never been found. I would cut their ass from jail to find out something. Number one. Some. We gotta find some. I, hey, hey, talk about. The Flannan Isles Lighthouse is located on the Elymore Island, just off of mainland Scotland. On the 15th of December, 1900, a transatlantic steamer called Arctur passed by the island and noticed that the lighthouse's light wasn't burning. Three days later, as the Arctur docked and leaked, they reported to the Northern Lighthouse Board, who dispatched the lighthouse relief tender ship to investigate. The ship arrived on Boxing Day with the ship's captain, Jim Harvey, sounding the ship's horn and setting up a flare. He hoped that this would get the attention of the three lighthouse keepers, but they got no response. Relief lighthouse keeper Joseph Moore was sent up the 160 steps to the lighthouse, and upon entering, he noticed that the clock on the wall had stopped. The table was set for an uneaten meal, and one of the chairs was overturned. He reported back to Harvey, who then sent two sailors ashore to look for the three men. A thorough search was conducted, but they found only a set of oil skins, indicating that one of the men had gone out in just his shirt sleeves, which was strange, as the keepers had noted in their log that they'd experienced awful weather. They focused their search on the landing platform on the right. west side of the yeah, island, right. and found that a supply box had been smashed open, and its contents were strewn about. Iron railings had been bent aside, part of a railway track, had been uprooted from its concrete moorings, and a rock weighing over a ton had moved. Some of the turf from the top of the cliffs had been ripped up, despite being 200 feet above sea level. Many theories have been presented as to what happened to the three men, from murder to being swept out to sea. How did swept out to sea? Angle the cup. Has ever been found. Oh, yeah, Thank you, guys. You know what I'm saying? But y'all give the video a thumbs up, like, subscribe, and comment yes or no if y'all want me to keep reacting long videos like this. I kind of like this, so I might start to react to any long videos like this. Y'all just let me know. Yeah, I might just do it anyway. But you know what I'm saying? Give me a thumbs up, like, subscribe, hit my social media for more requests videos. See y'all motherfuckers on that video. Let's ride, nigga.